So that line straight across, it's called the diameter. It goes from one side to the other through the center. All right? All right, so here's the next question. Wait, is the, hmm? isn't the radius like half the diameter? Radius is half the diameter. So this whole thing across is the diameter. From the center to one side is the radius. But again, talking about the diameter here, right? Just so it's clear, if I took this diameter, like a piece of string or something, and laid it on the outside, okay, it might go to there, right? Which I'd lay it across the outside. How many of those does it look like would fit around? Harvey? I said three. Three? Two. Okay, so there's a, an answer, three. Anybody think anything differently? Jason? I said two, but two. Well, you know, that's just my drawing. I may it go that far or farther? Yeah? Four. Okay, looks like four to you would fit. About five? No, no. no that's just too, too many. Much. One? No, no, uh, that's enough. less. Okay. Um, yeah. JC sounded a little skeptical of two, or? I don't know. You're not quite sure? Do you know how many fit in there? I will tell you exactly how many fit there. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so you can see it looks like it sounds like a lot of people came up with three, maybe four. Okay. Well, it turns out if you were to do this, lay this one down, you lay down another one there. Got two, and this one might come to here, and you just be a little bit short, right? Then you round it. Okay. I'm gonna round it. Uh, how much more would I need? This is one, two, three. But how do we know that those lines that you just made are the same exact amount as those Well, lines? of course we don't know that for sure. Well, we could measure, measure and, and then, then yeah. We're not going to do that because we don't have that time. We're going to have to, I mean, I appreciate that investigation spirit. All right. We don't have the time to do all that. And this is something you're familiar with. You may not realize it. It's just a little bit more of a radius that, or a diameter that we need. I'm not sure, but like I'm pretty sure. Is it 3.14? Mm -hmm. Actually, between three and four, it's 3.14. Then we don't really have to stop at 3.14. I know 159265, and then I don't know anymore. Um, four zero. Four zero? Oh. Um, it keeps on going forever. This is the number we call pi. Why do we call it pi? Got a cake. Here is why. Because it will keep pi. Yeah, why can't we call it? Because yeah, isn't it like the four turn into a p, and then the one is an i, and then three is an e? It's a coincidence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not pi, p i e, like cherry pie. It's pi, just p i. Okay? And it's a Greek letter. It's one of the letters from the Greek alphabet. Like you have A, B, C, they have alpha, beta, gamma. One of the letters in the alphabet is pi. You spell it like this. Starts with a P, but also starts with P is, now this is not a very convenient thing because we don't call it this usually, but a P uh, is also the first letter in perimeter, okay? It's the perimeter of a circle. There's that relationship between the perimeter and this, this number pi. But we don't call it the perimeter, what do we call that? Call uh, circle. Perimeter. Yeah, perimeter for just generally shapes, right? But for circles, we call it the circumference, okay? So that's what this thing is called. So the circumference all the way around the circle, why is what? Nothing. Is equal to a certain number of diameters. If we take the diameter we laid all the way around, we get how many diameters all the way around? 3.14, Pi, pi diameters will fit around the circle, okay? 3.14 diameters. So if I multiply the diameter by 3.14, I get the circumference of the circle. Uh, the only thing I'm going to change here is the diameter is made up of two radiuses. Okay? So this is pi times 2. Right? It's times 
two R. D can just be changed into two times R. Does that make sense? Last year we did like R squared. Yeah, like it's moving Well, R squared doesn't have anything to do with the radius. Or not, not the radius, the circumference. Oh, because she did like pi times R squared, and then that's how we figure out the radius. Because the radius times two is the diameter. Yeah. Right. So it's basically the same thing. No, that's very different. No, it's radius no. times radius is r squared, and we're taking radius times 2. Right. So you got 2 times radius and radius times radius, right? Two different things. Uh, that's a, like that's going to come up today. But for the circumference, it's pi times d. d is 2 times r, but 2 times r is not the same as r squared. We'll see. We're going to come up with that in a bit. Um, so we have, well, if you, if you look at it, if you were to look up uh, the formula for the circumference of a circle, you'd probably find 2 pi r, okay? And then just putting the 2 over there, because when we multiply numbers, it doesn't matter what order we multiply them, we can arrange them however we want. So they put the 2 there, and the pi, and then the r. Okay. But we just, we didn't come up with it rigorously, we didn't really calculate pi, but we can see that it's close to 3. It's only a little bit more than 3, 0.14159 more diameters would fill that gap right there. Okay. So there's the circumference, is 2 pi r. That's what we're going to use for circumference today. It's going to come in handy here in a, well, pretty sure today, unless we get hung up on something. Right. Uh, right. So the, the binders here, if I were to stack them in a tower, like a, theoretically just an infinitely tall tower, what pattern would I follow? Like, you could like do like one facing this way and the other one like turned around. Like this. Just keep doing that. And like this. Yeah. And now, as long as the spines are the same, which I found a picture where the spines are the same, uh, it's flat now, and then we just keep going on that. Yeah. Part. Do you have to make a circle? Like, if yeah. It, if it keeps like that, then it feels like it keeps all the way around. Well, if you go like this, and we just keep going back and forth, we won't wind up with a circle. No, no, that one's your right. Oh, this one. Yeah. That one would slide down. Right, that's why I said, you might not have caught what I said, I want to theoretically build a tower, like an infinitely tall tower. Oh. Couldn't do that with a circle. Okay. We should do that. Is that relevant at all to the circumference? Yeah. Well, it's, it's more relevant to the area. How? We'll see. Okay. But for now, keep this in mind, it's in your notes. Right? We're going to come back to it in a few minutes. Let's just tie a little bow around this trapezoid thing. Talk about that. Right? Uh, right? So, let's see. So many classes. Ended class. Did we, last class, take the trapezoid? Take a copy of it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Okay, so let's see if you remember. And see if you can tell me what the area of this trapezoid is using that copying and cutting and moving and all that kind of idea. Can I take the area? It's okay if you what? Of course. Yes. Can we make a copy like of that exact same shape and then flip mm -hmm. it around and then? That's that's what I was. Uh, yeah, I'm just seeing. Do you remember us doing that? And can you find the area? And if you can't, then we're gonna all figure out how to do it correctly together. All right, now I want to straighten something out here. And I've said it a few times, but maybe you haven't quite caught it. I am not trying to come up with a new way for you to find areas. I am trying to find for you a way, trying to help you find a way to not have to use just your rote memorization, okay? In this situation where you can't quite remember what to do, what the formula is, you should be able to build this rectangle out of the trapezoid, or maybe two trapezoids, and you know make that rectangle and figure out what the area of that trapezoid would have to be. Okay? So if you're in a situation, like right now, or some of you are, you can't remember what the formula is, you can build that thing and remake the formula yourself. Okay? You don't have to be told what the formula is, you don't have to Google it, you don't have to hope that you remember it right, you can make the formula as many times as you want. So, with this specific example of 23, 17, and 9, all right, say I'm a person who's forgotten what the formula is, okay, or never knew. I can do this. And as we did in class last time, 
This is one way we can go about it. Flip it around, throw it on top of this other one. Okay. And now what shape do I have? Parallelogram. Oh. Okay. Well, if I know the if I know the formula for the area of the parallelogram, then I'm in good shape as well. But if I don't, then it's almost a rectangle. What can you do, Sarah? Um, the dotted, um, yeah, that. Triangle. You put it on the other end. Put it over here. And then it's a rectangle. And now it is a rectangle. Four sides, four 90 degree angles, right? So now we just need to find the area of the rectangle, which we'll do in a second. What do you want to find the area of that big rectangle? You divide by two. Right, because we've got two trapezoids. So how do we find the area of this rectangle? Tiana. Okay, so because you got two trapezoid parts, uh -huh. you got 23 and you add it by 17. Okay, because we have, if we look at the base of this rectangle, mm -hmm. we have 17 there, then it's an upside down trapezoid, so we got the long side up here, 23 plus 17. Mm -hmm. Which is 40. Okay, so that's 40. And then you multiply it by 9 because 9 is the height. Okay, the height of 9. And that gives you 360. Mm -hmm. And then you divide 360 by 2 and get 180. Okay, there we go. Five and a half. Oh, 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 oh,
I don't have to remember this formula because somebody told me that was the formula and I really trust that person a lot and I don't think that they would lie to me and I'm pretty sure that that is the right formula. And I'm trusting my memory to not fail me. So, we can make knowledge. Let's make some knowledge with regards to circle. So, last shape that we're going to talk about, you know, in this little area unit, is circle. We're going to make a rectangle out of a circle. It all has to do with that stuff that we talked about at the beginning, beginning of class today. No, we'll see. So, take a circle, we're going to make a rectangle out of that circle. First, let's remind ourselves about the circumference, that it's 2 pi r, right? Pi times d, d is the diameter, pi is a little bit more than 3, about 3 diameters can fit around it. We'll write it like this though, 2 times pi times r. And even that has a little bit of an explanation, right? Now hopefully we wouldn't confuse this with pi times r squared, because we'll remember, well the circumference is this, it's really like a length. Right? I'm walking a length around the circle. How long is it? How is it related to the diameter? Well, it's about three diameters around, but just a little bit more, 0.14 more. So from here, all the way around, how much is that? 3.14. 3.14 diameters, yeah. 3.14 diameters. Diameters. What about from here to there? Circumference is all the way around. No, not from here to there. From here around the circle to there. 1.7. What are you trying to do with this pi? Or you're trying to do it in cut in half. Cut in half. Okay. Well, let's not worry about cutting pi in half. Oh, it would work. Let's just take this thing, right? Instead of saying 3.14, take it, divide it by half, multiply it by d. Let's just say, let's just take this whole thing, divide it by two. Right, because it's half, it's the circumference. This is going to be important. Divide by 2. Okay, So half of the circumference is equal to, well, 2 pi r divided by 2. <coughs> if I have 2 of something and I take half of that, wouldn't that just be 1 of that thing? Yeah. Right? This is 2 pi r. So half of that would just be 1 pi r. Right? 1 pi r. I don't have to write the 1. It's 1 pi r. 1 times pi r. So, about? It, all of it, okay. So all the way around, the circumference is 2 pi r. Agreed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then I said, well, what about just half away? Half pi r. Half of 2 pi r. Yeah. 1 pi r. Which is 1 pi r. Okay. Pi r. Okay. okay. So, if I take the radius, and I multiply it by 2, get the diameter, multiply that by 3.14, I get the whole circumference. If I take just the radius and multiply that by 3, that'll get me halfway around. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Can you explain how you got pi r? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing we said was all the way around is 2 pi r. Okay? Then, I just kind of, it's almost random or arbitrary that I ask this next question. What about if we only go halfway? The only thing I'm trying to get you to see is that all the way around is 2 pi r, halfway around one pi. is 1 pi r. That's all I'm trying to say. So that's pi r, that's pi r. If I add them together, I'd have 2 pi r, I'd have the whole circumference. Here's half of it, pi r. Yes? Uh, half of it would be 1.57. Well, the thing that's tricky about pi is that how many decimal places does it have? A lot. A lot. Infinity. Infinity. So to divide it by 2, I'd have to like know what the last digit was, and then divide it by 2. But I don't know what it is because it doesn't exist. We can, we can round it, right? 3.14 is rounding as well. Will we ever have to like figure out like a half, like pi r? Or like just half of the circle, not the whole thing? Oh. Sure. I mean, I could. Make a problem where you have to find half a circle. Half the circle is going to come in handy in what we're about to do, though. Yeah. Wait. So. Um, like, you know how like some numbers go on forever. 
Yeah, yeah. It's like five. Yeah, but uh, it's just the same number over and over and over and over again. Like point one six seven one six seven one six seven. Yeah. 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 So like, what is um pi's like number divided by what? That doesn't exist. No. What? Lots of people try figuring it out. What? Divided by what? There is no combination of some number over another number that equals pi. If a and b, if you assume a and b are like whole numbers, this is not possible. Make them decimals. Yeah. Well, any decimal that ends or repeats can be written as a fraction itself. And then I just wind up with a fraction in a fraction, which can then be turned into a whole number of a whole number. And then, so if I wanted to get pi and I wanted to get, put some number in here, there would already have to be a decimal that repeats forever and ever and ever with no patterns and never ending. And that would violate what we just assumed over here. So this does, it's what we call an irrational number. Rational numbers are ratios. Right? And there are lots of numbers that are here. There's an infinite number of irrational numbers. Okay? This is a really famous one. This is another famous one. Uh, this is another famous one. Okay? There are numbers that... Uh, well, these are on it, and then this is just the square root of 2, so you can just square root of 2. But it never has an end. Pardon me? I'm 100% confident there's lots of computers somewhere. And I'm sure one of those computers has the most digits of pi. I think they have it to trillions of digits. But it just never ends. Yes? I know this is relative process, but what is every time you do this? It's a little advanced for us right now. But it just it's a reminder to not do what you see here. And I, too, would do so. I squared. Those are jokes that you'll get later. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's stay back. Let's get back on here. All right. It's a good question. These are all good questions, but let's get back to here. Okay. Halfway around the circle, pi times r. All right. Okay. Here we go. Uh, the way we're going to make a rectangle out of a circle, let's start off slow. Okay? We're going to cut this thing into, this is the same guy who does the math with bad drawings that I showed you before. So, 14 pieces. Why 14? Just because that's what that guy chose to use, 14. And this is where the, the binders part of it is relevant. Right? We're going to stack them so that they alternate like you alternated the binders. Alternate them, we put one up like this, one down like this, and so on, so on, so on, and so on. Okay. Why is this curve right here? Because of the rounded ends. Yeah, it's round. It came from this round. circle. It's like a piece of pie, right? A piece of pie, a little bit of a round where the crust is. Because it came from the edge of the circle. Yeah. So far, so good? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, we're, we're all on the same page here. All right. So, I take this piece, I put it right there. Right, with the crust side down, I guess, right, pointing up. How long is this part of that slice? The radius. The radius, right? This is good. This is algebra thinking. Where I don't know what it is. I don't know what the number is, but I do know it's the same as the radius of the circle. It's the radius. Sarah? So a ray of algebra, are we, in, are we taking pre-algebra this year? Or? Well, next year you'll probably take algebra, so you can think of this as a pre-algebra class. It's called a free math, but it definitely has elements of algebra in it. Here's the part that I want you to pay close attention to. Okay. You see, there's one rounded piece up here, but there's a rounded piece down here too. Right? This comes from the edge of the circle, but so does this. For every one that's on top, there's one on the bottom, right? If I were to add up all of this. All of these arcs here, and all of these, what that add up to? 14. Not the number of pieces. I'm talking about if I add up this. Yes, who said the circumference? The circumference. So if I add up all of these and all of these, I get the circumference. What if I just add up these? 
Not the bottom one, just the top one. No, you get the half the circle. The half of the circumference. If I add up all of these, I get all of the circumference. If I add up only half of them, I get half of the circumference. So you get two pi r. One pi r. One pi r up here, pi r. That's how long this would be if I add up all those little bumps. Down here would be the other pi r, and together there would be two pi r. We're just worried about this one, pi r. Half the circumference. Wait. Wait. You're going to jump ahead, I can tell. Okay, the next thing that we do, we're just inching our way towards infinity here. We then cut it into, looks like 22 pieces. We do the same thing. What happens when we cut them into more pieces? They get One, smaller. Yeah? You get a smaller size mm -hmm. pizza. Slice, of, yeah, slice, 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 slice of pizza. The same Everything's the same as before, right? How long is this? I guess it's over here. How long is this? The radius. How long is all of these bumps on top? Not the bottom, just the top. One pi r. One pi r. Okay, this next part might be hard for you to believe, right? People have trouble with infinity. That's what we're going to talk about. Infinity. We're going to cut the circle into how many pieces? Fourteen. Infinity. Infinity. This next slide is going to show you what happens when you cut it into infinity pieces. The problem with that that people struggle to wrap their brain around. Okay, and it's it's difficult to wrap your brain around. Infinity is not a number. It's, it's just forever. everything forever and ever and never ending, right? Oh, it's so it's I'm not cutting into a million or a billion or a trillion pieces. I'm cutting it into an infinite number of pieces. And in mathematics, not in the real world, but in mathematics, you can do that. You can cut something into an infinite number of pieces and see what happens. In the real world, I can't actually take a circle and cut it into an infinite number of pieces. In math, in theory, we could. Because an interesting keep, result comes out. Because, you know, keep, keep going with the lines, no matter how small it gets. Right. It's like one line is equivalent to like a trillion lines. Trillion yeah. Pieces. Like one little line right here is like a trillion pieces, right? It's crazy. It's a trillion. Right? It's uh, 12 zeros. Million, 12 right. trillion. Stay with me, please. All right, so we cut it into an infinite number of pieces. Here's what happens when we cut it into an infinite number of pieces, right? The skinnier it gets, the, 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 the sharper this angle is, the straighter it gets, right? The straighter this, this bumpy top and bottom get. When you actually cut it into an infinite number of pieces, this is not bumpy at all. Is perfectly straight. Okay? Perfectly straight. And of course, this is straight. This is just how big from here to there. Radius. The radius. Right? And along here, how long is this? One pi r. One pi r. And keep in mind, this is straight. Of course it is. That just comes from cutting a piece of the pi out. But this also is no longer bumpy at all. It's not close to straight. It is straight. Okay? So if this is straight and this is straight, and of course, this is straight and this is straight. Then what shape is this? Rectangle. How do we find the area of a rectangle? Base times height. What's the base? Radius. Pi times r. What's the what's the height? Radius. Times the radius. What's radius times radius? Radius. Radius squared. There's pi r squared. What does it tell you? Oh, circumference. No, area. 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 Base times height. Base times height tells you area, right? This area is the same as the area of the circle. I R squared. You can take out all of these shapes back to rectangles and we get this area as pi R squared. What do we have? We're 27. We have time. Okay. Any questions? Sarah? How do you find how do you find the radius? Well, like on the rectangle, like the radius. Uh -huh. You just take like pi times radius squared, but how do you find the radius? Like how do you find the radius of the circle? No, of like the rectangle. Well, the, it's not that the rectangle has a radius, it's that this side of the rectangle is the same as the radius of the circle. Okay. Right, because I'm taking little slices of it, and then I'm stacking them all next to each other. And so that's the same as the radius, just like it was here, and it was back here. It's the same as the radius. Yeah. So it's like the pieces are so, so small that you can't even see it anymore? 
you see, see what? You can't see the pieces anymore? Yeah, yeah, you couldn't even like see between the two lines on either side of the slice. Mm -hmm. The pieces are so small they become like lines, just straight mm -hmm. lines. Two sides come together and become just one line. Two lines are touching. Sure. You can think of it that way, but it's not like there's this many, but it's just you're trying to like kind of visualize it. That's a good one. Right. Right. It goes on forever. There is no end to the number of pieces that are in this rectangle. Find what? Water. The end of the circle. Not really in reality, but in theory. Yeah. Right. Everybody. Hey. Uh. But you're distracting everyone else. So do we have a question? No, it's just like five. Sure. Okay. It just doesn't what doesn't make sense about it, Audrey? I don't know what to do. No, we're still memorizing. We're not just yeah. memorizing. Yeah, we're still memorizing something. Well, yeah, there is a little bit. Okay. A little bit that I'm really asking you to memorize is pi. Okay, pi. It's all I'm really asking you to memorize. Otherwise, I mean, try it tonight. Try and explain this to, to a parent or a sibling they won't get it. how you can make this rectangle out of a circle. Question? Yeah. I remember. Uh, now that I, I remember this because of the formula, but now I understand mm -hmm. how, like, how you, how you got that. Yeah. You didn't know all that. Because that I mean, I recognize it from the formula. Sure. But now I know how, you, like, how that came to be. Isn't that kind of neat? Or how it could come to be. I think oh, they yeah. came up with it originally a different way. But like with the with the trapezoid, I every year that I have to know the area of the trapezoid formula, I always forget it. Do I look it up? Yeah. No. I just remake it again. Because I remember this copying and then moving and then, oh, now it's a rectangle and the base plus the base plus the height divided by two. Right? Because it's it Twice. Then I remember it. This one, I never forget this. I've never forgotten pi r squared is area because it's pretty simple. But the point is, now you kind of have an idea of why it works. Not what it is, but why it works. Where it can come from. Like, I know a lot of math we'll use later in life, but when will we get to pi to infinity? Look, guys, if you if you want me to give you a situation where you're going to use this in everyday life, I'm not going to pretend like I can give that to you. There is no situation where you have to cut something into an infinite number of pieces. You can't even do it. Is that the point? Yes. No. no. Just to know Look, guys and girls, if it's going to frustrate you that you're not going to use this every single day of your life, sad to say, you're going to be frustrated this entire class all year long. Because that's not the point of every single thing that you learn. Okay? When are you going to need to read to kill a mockingbird? Do you have to do it? No. It's a good book. Good book. have to do it. There are benefits to these things, and they are not always the benefit. I use this every day in my everyday life. Okay? Correct. Okay.